Welcome to Hotchkiss, Colorado in the lower Gunnison Basin. This is the year that we're celebrating how water connects us all uh, through the Water 22 public awareness campaign with the message that it all starts here with all of us being part of the solution to Colorado's water issues. We're gonna be seeing uh, Paonia Reservoir as well as the Fire Mountain Canal System, hearing about critical water quality improvements as well as uh, visiting a local orchard to hear about how water is critical for the agricultural uh, production in the area. So come along as we tour the Lower Gunnison Basin. The Gunnison Basin Roundtable looks at all of the Gunnison Basin and the Basin Implementation Plan for every basin is supposed to address the water needs for the basin as there is a gap between supply and demand. So the BIP tries to address water needs for agriculture, for the environment, for municipal and industrial water needs and it lists projects and prioritizes projects. As part of the Lower Gunnison project, there were on-farm and off-farm projects, and the irrigation and ditch efficiencies sol solve a problem or deal with a problem that is linked to the Manco Shale and the water quality issues in the Compagre and also in this valley. This area contributes significant amount of salt and selenium load to the Colorado River. When you irrigate or when your canal leaks, it infiltrates and percolates into the soil and can dissolve salt and selenium. And selenium has a negative impact to fish. That was one of the things the Lower Gunnison Project addressed. And really, you could say was successful to some extent because the stretch of the Gunnison River um, between Delta and Grand Junction was delisted from the selenium, like in paired waters list. This is the head gate of the Fire Mountain Canal. The, uh, the canal itself is 34.7 miles long. It goes from here clear to Hotchkiss. Uh, at this point here, we divert about 180 CFS of water. This is the diversion dam for the canal right here. It was built in 1949 to 1953. It's located about six miles below the dam of Paonia. Unfortunately, there's other ditch companies downstream that are our senior to Fire Mountain. So by July, end of July, first part of August, depending on the year, when the North Fork gets way down, we're pretty much out of priority. So that was the reason for the reservoir. The reservoir is, you know, 100% Fire Mountain water. And when we're done with the stored water in the reservoir, we go out, we're usually done. Last year, we shut off on August 13th. Pioneer Reservoir, you know, you can see the, the muddiness in it, the sedimentation issues we have. So it was constructed between 1959 and 1962. Capacity, you know, it was 21,000 acre feet when we started. It was built down to 15.5 now, and the entire dead pool is uh, full of sediment. Now that we've replaced the gates, we're going into kind of a new mold in the spring of the year during the natural sediment loads in the river. We're actually able to flush out and try to maintain what we have now and be able to flush the new sediment coming in out you know I mean we're doing a lot of other things like piping canals and going to sprinkler systems drip systems and that kind of stuff to conserve on water too but you know we keep losing it up here as we conserve down there so we're not gaining a whole lot. Well my name is Arturo Jimenez I've been here uh, four years working for Honeycrest Portraits here we have uh, about 80 acres of uh, apples and peaches. We usually don't have a lot of water every year. The water from the Grand Mesa then runs on a creek and then we have our filters up above and then it gets distributed throughout the orchard. We also have uh, three ponds where we collect water to irrigate when the water is short. On the lower orchards, we get water from Fire Mountain Canal because it's downhill. This is our filtration system here. It comes to the filters, sand filters, and then it goes back down into the, to the orchard. And then we catch that water in the ponds to use that water and not lose it. The last few years, we only had like 
60-65% of the water. So and that's when the ponds come handy. And um, that's how we've been able to survive the last uh, few years. Uh, my name is Kerry Dennison, but I'm here today to talk about recreation and environment in the Gunnison Basin as a whole. We have many more new people moving to the valleys. Um, we have a, a greater focus that comes with the drier times, and I think all of that is coming to a head. We don't really generally have water rights that protect rivers and streams. We have very junior ones that the CWCB holds, but remember, those are the minimum required to sustain the fishery. When I was in high school, I fished the Gunnison River or the North Fork of the Gunnison downstream from Paonia. Now that's not really a possibility because the river gets dewatered for so long that there, this is no longer a fishery. In the first water plan, the state of Colorado said, hey, let's, let's create some, um, some stream management plans. And we tried pretty hard to put together a stream management plan. For the past few years, I've been working on the Cimarron River on a flow and a flow improvement project that relies on leasing water out of Silverjack Reservoir. And we've used it every year since. We've had to get that water past their head gate and it's been barely enough to keep the fishery alive. Those types of tools need to be thought of as just everyday water management if we're going to be reacting to a warming climate and reduced water supply. I think it's really important to have partners on the ground to get that actually be uh, here and see what projects are, are going on. It's a different feel than you would just hear about it. So I appreciate the tour and I appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, listen to all of our projects that are going on here on the Western Slope.